how do you start a video like this at all? Like, I don't even know what to say because how do you prepare for this? And so is you can't, especially when it happened in an off season. Well, what was it that happened? Let's just return to the basic and start it from there, shall we? So Paul Fenton has been fired by Craig Leopold. What in the world just happened? I did not even get this news until two hours later. I was out playing football, rhyming around, having fun, doing stuff that didn't require a phone where I shouldn't be on the phone. So I didn't know. All of a sudden I pick up my phone and there's 10 notifications from people and 10 notifications on Twitter trying to get in contact with me. Okay, something big went down. Open the first one and my jaw dropped. I knew Paul Fenton was under some fire. Heck, I even made a video called Fenton's Fail First Year. He wasn't in a good position, necessarily. But I did not expect him to go after one year. My initial reaction was it was a little bit reactionary to fire somebody over the move. Yes, some of them have been bad. Yes, the Grand and trade was awful. Yes, the uh, Nino Rider trade was a car crash of every proportion. But I did actually think he had done a good enough job in terms of the scouting department, in terms of the drafting. I liked the coil trade for the Donato. I think that was a good one. Like the Hunter Quirman, that was a good one. Like some of his signings, those have been good. I even like the Zuccarello signing that some seems against. I like the Zuccarello signing. So I did not see this being a thing on the move, which it turned out it wasn't. It turned out, and I have all this information from Bright Russo. I'm going to read up quotes from that. Don't worry. But it turns out it was because of a bad fit. He didn't fit in Minnesota. Apparently he was a poor leader and a poor choice for Leopold, who has admitted it. But let's go into the, into the actual quote from Craig Leopold. He has said this to Mike Russo. I think it is. It is at least him who broke it on Twitter. Craig Leopold on how he knew Paul Fenton as gen assistant general manager compared to Minnesota GM. I knew him in a different way. He was an assistant general manager really doing scouting. That was his role. And he was tremendous at it. Okay. Good start, good start. That makes sense. He was tremendous at scouting, in my opinion. Yes, the Philip Johansson drafting was probably not right. Hopefully, Philip Johansson about back, but he hasn't looked good. But if you look at some of his other acquisitions, at least from this year, I like him. Boldy is a quality signing. I think the Matthew Warren in the sixth round was absolutely awesome. I like Thomas Jones. I like what he has been giving us and I like first off I like a lot of the guys we got was really good guy really good guys yes it was a lot of left handers but we can fix that later I like what we brought to the team within the draft he has done well there even in Minnesota you can kick the corner the wall as well also a nice player to get in he looks like a fantastic player to get in I think it was the third round so he's good at drafting we can agree on that he did what in well in Minnesota in that aspect it was the other position of being a general manager the organizational, the strategical, the management of the people, the hiring and motivation of the department. When I talk about not being a fit, that is what I'm referring to. And here's the kicker, because you can be tremendous at scouting, you can be tremendous at drafting, but these qualities just listed are the ones you need as a GM. That's the ones you need as a leader. And it's clear that Benson did not possess these. Benson did not have the right tool to be a leader. Now, where does this go into the account of Greg Leopold? Because he obviously made a mistake. Well, he did kind of admit it later with an interview. Again, I think it's with Mike Russo. I could be wrong, so don't quote me on it. Leopold said morale showed him they didn't have the right leader in Fenton. I missed it, and this is on me. First of all, credit to Leopold for actually eating the crows that he uh, probably had to eat with this. He signed Fenton. That was his guy. He came from Nashville himself, remember, when he got the owner, owner title. He was there um, beforehand. He knew Fenton there. He was right about what he was. He had a good feeling on him, but he sadly didn't see the lack of leading qualities in Fenton. Um, and honestly, with the first quote, he kind of threw him under the bus, which seems a little bit evil, but also probably fair, actually. I think that's there's some truth to this. I think Fenton was a bad bus. We saw it with the analytics staff, which was completely dismantled, especially some of the moves that he made um, with the backroom after the Nino Rider trade, which was complete and utter crazy for me that he didn't even listen to them. I think he was a poor manager of the backroom staff. I think he was poor at managing on a ice level. I think he was poor at being a general manager, which comes with leading qualities. You could argue that the trade was what did it in, but actually not. Um, again, Leopold has actually stated this was not the trade that was the reason. Um, 
So what was? That's the main question because it wasn't a trade, and that kind of surprised me. I thought the Neil Rider would have had been a good kicker into why Benson didn't work because exactly the re- things we heard about from Mike Russo later on that he didn't listen, he didn't have any scouted, he just made that on a whim. Uh, we don't need need a rider anymore, so we want to get something for him. And that is a poor thing when you don't scout and listen to your analytics that. And I think I thought that would have been some kind of idea towards why Benson got fired. It didn't show up that way. Instead, the reason apparently in Cold to Craig Leopold was the reason for the termination is not any one big issue. It is over time, smaller issues were building up. It was not a good fit. Basically confirming that this was not because of trade. There was just a lot of things that was just ma- mismatched. And if that has been the case, which it does seem like, right to fire him. And credit to Leopold for doing it, because you, if you don't have the right person, the worst thing you can do is keep going with that person, trying to make things work that obviously isn't. This was never going to work with if that was a working relationship that was in Minnesota at the time. So in that aspect, I fully agree with the move. It's shocking, it's confusing, I'm not sure I should be partying, if I should be happy, but I don't know. This is such a confusing thing, because when you change the GM, the whole system, from top to bottom, is affected. If you sack a coach, usually it's just the ISO of project that is going to be involved in that. We saw that with Mike Joe when he got there. What came in, we got Bruce Boudreau, good trade-off in my opinion, I like Bruce Boudreau, um, and he kind of... Sh- the only thing he kind of trained there was the on ice product, and that worked well. So what's next? What's next? Because the next thing that is going to happen is obviously confusion. So Neopold has kind of reached out to some players. He especially reached out to apparently Spurgeon, which is quality to see, I think, because that probably means we want to keep him as one of the leaders. I want Spurgeon to sign a good contract. Please be a good one. Um, and I want to keep Burton because he's just brilliant, but it's good to have some talks with him, some communication with him. So I like that he, he's actually reaching out to a few of the players. And apparently he's reached out to all the players explaining the situation. Um, understandably, so this is a huge move the players is going to be affected. They want to know what's going on. So I like that there's some communication going that way. So after the first confusion, what is next for Minnesota? Because now we go with a lot of different ways, a lot of different options. So let's look at, again, Mike Russo, because he is probably the best source. If you haven't followed him, please do, because he is generally the first one to break stuff when something happens to Minnesota. He is brilliant at figuring out what's happening, and he has a lot of exclusives towards him. So he's always a good one to follow, and always a good one to kind of keep an eye on. Leopold said Mike Madonna will be part of of the interview process, Minnesota did not have a hockey guy in last year's process. Leopold would like an experienced GM, although he's not ruling out anybody yet. Mike Madonna is not a candidate. But what role could I see Mike Madonna be in? If he isn't GM, what role could it be? I think we kind of need a player of operation, don't we? So I like a mixture between owner and GM because there has been a little bit too much involvement from Craig Leopold over the years, again we see it that he kind of messes up a few things and he admittedly uh, did admit that he didn't get the right fit here. But I think we saw it with Fletcher as well. Leopold is too involved. Leopold needs to be an owner, be good, but keep that as his role. You're an owner, get somebody as, as a president of operation, get the GM in the second chain and then have those two work together. Mike Madonna could be an excellent president of operations, in my opinion. I could absolutely see it. Because he is a smart hockey man. He is a smart hockey guy. He knows the city well. He knows the fan base. He knows exactly what's expected. And I feel like if he could be a part of that, I would not be against it. So, while he says he's not a candidate, I still think they're going to interview, see what Mike Madonna wants to bring to the table. And if they fit, maybe there's a chance of Mike Madonna. I would not be against Mike Madonna completely. But if we are going to get an experience GM, is somebody with experience, do not pick Shirelli. I will scream it from the mountains. Do not pick Shirelli. I'm going to Minnesota in September, so I'll actually be there to beat you with a fish if you actually end up picking Shirelli as general manager of the Minnesota Wild. But it seems the front-running candidate right now is Ron Hickstyle, and I would not be totally against that. I don't think he did a bad job in Philadelphia. Yes, he got fired, but I think that was a weird, weird move. I don't think necessarily he should be fired. I like the things that he's done to the team. 
I like some of the drafts he have had, especially. I think somebody like Fastberry is brilliant, um, and Frost is a great, great pickup for them. He has a decent track record as general manager. I don't think that was what was wrong with Philadelphia. I think it was more so wrong with Hextel being the coach, and I don't think they took that option instead of firing the GM. Again, once you fire the GM, that's a monumentally bigger change, and I don't understand why Philadelphia fired Hextel and when they did. But I think Hextall could be a fine fit in Minnesota. And according to Elliot Freeman, have to think there's more than one candidate. But word is Minnesota has already reached out for permission to speak to Ron Hextall for the new vacant GM position. Good. Great. I'm. If that's what we get, I think it's a fine fit. If we can get him and a president of hockey operations, perfect. That would work perfectly in my mind. That would be the ideal scenario. Worst scenario is we don't get a hot prison of the operation, and we get Peter Shirelli and Mike Milbury. That has also been a rumor. Mike Milbury and Peter Shirelli share. Oh dear lord. We could get God. You do not say that name. That is specifically said if you only put John in front of that name. Also, us getting Hextall would be really awkward the second Fletcher and Hextall has to make any trading together. Basically, it would be the Spider-Man meme at this point. It would basically be, how does it feel from the other chair? But yeah, this has been rambly. I've been trying to figure out most of the things before the video. Still not sure what's happening. Still not just getting new information. I will probably make a follow-up video when we get the new GM, when probably some more information is released. Right now, it's mere confusion. If Benson says something tomorrow, I'll probably try and make a video on that. Hear what he has to say on the matter of fact. What does he think went wrong? Why wasn't he fitting with Minnesota? Why did this relationship turn so sour so quickly because a GM fired in one year is ludicrous. But anyways, tell me what you think. Tell me what you think of the move. Is it good? Is it bad? Who do you want us to get? Who do you not want us to get? Anyone who isn't saying Peter Shirelli right down there, definitely lying. And yeah, I'll talk to you afterwards and I'll see you guys soon.